When you step into Dr. Rolando Hinojosa Smith's office on the campus of the University of Texas at Austin, on the wall hangs a certificate. It is not the bachelor's degree he earned from UT Austin in 1953, nor is it the doctoral degree he received in 1969 from the University of Illinois. It is instead Orlando's diploma from Mercedes Elementary School. Orlando loves the Rio Grande Valley. The valley is close to his heart and continues to influence his work. Rolando was born January 21, 1929, in Mercedes, Texas. His father, Manuel, was born at a ranch just a few miles north of the city. His mother, Carrie, was born in Rockport, Texas, but the valley has been her home since she was six years old. She was a member of one of the oldest Texas Anglo families to come to the valley. I think that as a young man, uh, I did listen to my parents. They weren't after me with advice all the time, but when I asked, I listened very carefully because they were wiser. Uh, my father never finished high school or college, but that didn't make him an ignorant person. He had a lot of experience, so I knew that what he was telling me was always the truth and always to my benefit. They were both very available whenever I needed something, and I don't mean money or even material, but when I needed some guidance in some way. I, I always wanted to be in plays, and uh, I think that's what helped me develop my voice to be a good teacher. And I would say, I'm going to be in a school play, and they said, well, good, you know, get the part. I mean, that isn't a push. I don't know what a push is, but in a very nice way. And my dad was always very proud of me. I've told people that I think my dad must have been a bit of a bore because he always talked well of his five kids. But his doing that uh, made us all a very happy family, but also successful in whatever it is that we wanted to do and did. Fernando was one of five children born into a family of readers. His parents read to each other, to his brothers and sisters and to him. My mom and dad were great readers, my two brothers and sisters, and I'm the baby of the family. And so I just thought everybody read. And then I discovered that by being a good reader, I could become a good writer. And uh, it worked out that way. I also wanted to teach. My grandmother, uh, Martha Phillips Smith, had been a teacher. My mom had taught for a bit. And my two sisters and one of the brothers, of the two brothers I had, uh, were also teachers, so I guess it was either genetic or logical <laughs> that I become a teacher. As a child growing up, Orlando says his parents inspired him. Very much so. They were, they were very affirmative, and I don't remember any negativism anywhere, like you can't do that or uh, you won't be able to do it if you do that, you know. You know it was uh, the philosophy of get your feet wet and see how you like the water. and. Uh, and it was fine. I knew I had their backing when I was 17, and they trusted me at that age. I had never been out of the valley at that age to, uh, to go away from home, you know, under my own supervision. Well, the armies, of course, but I mean, I could have, I don't know, run away or whatever it is that you do. And I knew that I had their backing. And uh, they, they always demonstrated it, you know. And of course, I produced, but the nice part was that I had their back. And there was never any doubt but that he would go to college. Yeah, it's funny though. <laughs> we didn't have any money, but everyone just knew uh, maybe a gut instinct that we were going to go to college. And that was even discussed, you know. Once my dad said, and he, I'm, you know, the last of the family, that he had saved up $2,000 for my college education which was a lot of money, I mean, gosh. You know, he didn't earn maybe 4000 a year. So I don't know how long it took him to earn 2000 or save it. And then when I told him that the Army would pay for my uh, education, he said, well, you'll have 2000 here for you. I know how much sacrifice it must have taken because he, he was not a big wage earner. You know, he worked at whatever he could. He was a policeman, but what do they make? $200 a month at that time? This is 30s and 40s. So it was a sacrifice, and mm -hmm. yeah, I certainly appreciate it, and that's why I've never forgotten what it was that he, that he did and the trouble that he went to. Mm -hmm. At the age of 15, Rolanda knew he would become a writer. He received positive encouragement from his teachers, especially at Mercedes High School, 
where his writings were selected for Creative Bits, a local writing publication. So I submitted some things which were accepted and I became very excited. In my senior year, I uh, submitted two things again and those two were uh, accepted. In fact, in Mercedes right now, at the little library at home, which is not so little anymore, um, they have five of the pieces that I wrote when I was 15 and 16. And that gave me my big push. And uh, I never won. I, I never got first or second. I think I got honorable mention, but that was enough for me. As long as got, they were accepted, that was a big thing. And then the honorable recognition, that was even a bigger boost. At 17, and with his parents' permission, Rolando joined the Army. After serving three years, he decided to go to college. The GI Bill, as it did for many young soldiers, provided his financial assistance. But since I'd been out of high school for three years, I said, it's logical for me to go to a junior college. And um, so I took uh, some hours at uh, TSC. I took government. And then I also took uh, six hours of English, which I thought was the best thing I could have done then and now later as I reflect on it because I wasn't used to the discipline of the classroom. And government gave me a push toward uh, a subject that I love, history and government. And then English uh, prepared me even more for writing because without a good reading foundation, you can't be a good writer. I've always wanted to be a writer. So my TC experience with uh, Sally Lindaberry, who was my uh, my teacher at the time, or my professor, was a, an immense help to me. And it, was, it was just great. I mean, when I walked out of there, I knew I was ready for UT. Galanda went on to the University of Texas at Austin. While he studied, he worked part-time as a tutor and as a translator in the campus library. In 1953, he graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree. His memories of his undergraduate years are pleasant and he still keeps in touch with friends he met at UT. Rolando taught English at Brownsville High School in 1959, 60, and 61. That year he took and passed the federal entrance exam and went to work for the government. He wanted to save money so he could attend graduate school. After working for nearly two years, he chose New Mexico Highlands University. Working part-time, he received his master's degree in English in 1962. By that time, Rolando was already thinking about doctoral programs. He then selected the University of Illinois, and in 1969, he received his Ph.D. In 1998, the University of Illinois honored him with their Alumni Achievement Award, the highest award given by the University of Illinois Alumni Association. Rolando had always dreamed of teaching at the University of Texas at Austin. After teaching at several other universities, he was invited to join UT Austin in 1981. There at UT, he is the Ellen Clayton Garwood Professor of Creative Writing in the English Department. Rolando has published more than 13 novels. His works have been widely translated in Europe and have been the subject of numerous theses and dissertations. He has made more than 250 presentations and lectures. I write for myself. I stick writing about the valley because that's what I know. And I think that writers usually write about what they know. And uh, everything that I write has to do with the Rio Grande Valley, the people, its culture, its history. And when people ask me why, I say, it's not only because I'm from there, which is very important, but it's also because I know the place and I know the people. Today, Rolando lectures all over the world. He's been to Spain, France, the Netherlands, Cuba, and even to his home in the Rio Grande Valley. In May of 1998, he returned to the campus where his college career began to lecture students and faculty. Rolando is a proud father of one son and two daughters, and he adores his grandchildren. He says, I have the best job in the world. I teach what I want to be teaching, and I teach what I like to teach. I've always had help along the way, but I'm not unique. In order to do something well, you have to be helped by someone else along the way. Because 
I see my role now as helping students. Uh, when they're my students and they say, I, I would like to work for the master's, the PhD, and I think that they're, they've got the potential, then I will help. And uh, I don't know how many I've helped, but I will help as many as I possibly can. My biggest thrill is when I receive a letter telling me, I've earned the PhD or I have the master's and I want to thank you for it. Well, that, it's the biggest yeah, I don't have a heart of stone. I'm really touched by that. Yeah. But it's a life of service. And